Hey guys, this is John with Disaster Nut, and uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, mitigation, uh, disaster mitigation, and uh, what that means. Now, mitigation is the effort to reduce loss of life and property by lessening the impact of disasters. Uh, oftentimes, uh, this is achieved through uh, something called risk analysis, um, where you do um, a rundown of uh, various hazards and, and things and also you do an analysis of that to see how frequently they occur, uh, why they occur and uh, things of that nature and that will provide a foundation for mitigation activities that will reduce that risk. I will give you a uh, I'll give you a little example that that uh, most of us can relate to. Um, think of uh, Okay, let's think of a kind of like a highway mitigation. You, you've got a, a highway uh, that's on a curving road, um, a, a coastal road, and it, it curves. There's a sharp curve at the end, and um, let's say a lot of cars go off that curve, um, uh, maybe 20 cars a year. So obviously, using risk analysis, you can see it's a, it's a pretty hazardous turn there, and 20 cars a year, that's a lot of people dying. Um, and so uh, the mitigation planners might be thinking well what can we do to mitigate people going off the cliff well first of all uh, what's the speed limit well the speed limit of this particular road it might be 65 miles per hour alright well why don't we a few miles up the road why don't we slow the traffic down so we'll have signs uh, 50 miles per hour uh, getting closer 40 miles per hour and uh, closer to the turn 35 miles per hour Okay, and uh, on top of that, why uh, why don't we do those blinking signs uh, with the curb warning so people can see that there's a big curve coming up? Um, and uh, just in case they don't see all these things, why don't we just add a a big barrier uh, at the end? Uh, one of those, um, I guess, those uh, metal barriers that you've seen on on side of bridges and things like that. Let's put one of those up so that if they miss all the signs. Uh, they they will hopefully hit that barrier and not go off the cliff into the ocean. So that that's a really simple way to think about mitigation. It is trying to find ways to uh, lessen a, uh, the impact of a disaster or, or uh, reduce the loss of life uh, and damage to property. Um, another example of mitigation in terms of fire prevention would be uh, installing maybe a fire uh, detector in your home. I know here in Illinois it's the law that you have to have a fire detector installed in your home. You also need to have a carbon monoxide detector installed in your home. And I did a video on that uh, on my other channel about uh, the importance of the uh, smoke detector, so I won't go into that here. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, mitigation activities, uh, why do mitigation activities? Well, uh, studies have shown that for every uh, dollar we spend on mitigation activities we actually save um, people uh, four dollars so um, we're actually saving money by doing mitigation activities and, and uh, making sure that people are aware of, of these things as well um, also let's see here um, about you know, for example, the rigorous billing standards adopted by 20,000 communities across the country are saving the na nation more than $1.1 billion a year in preventable flood damage. And uh, that's a good thing. So, um, you know, mitigation in terms of flooding, you've got that uh, national flood insurance program or whatever that's run by the, the government. And uh, I haven't really looked into that a lot, but apparently in some areas it's been really effective. Um, and uh, some areas, you know, they have uh, uh, channeled their waterways and stuff like that, so areas are, no, are not flooded out anymore. Uh, in certain cases, they've even gone out, governments have even gone out and bought up all the houses in areas that are frequently uh, flooded out. Uh, <clears throat> but let's, uh, let's talk a little more about um, mitigation. And I'll, I'll post the links to some of these things that I have um, found. Uh, on a the sidebar there and uh, this is the uh, mitigation ideas 
possible uh, possible mitigation measures by hazard type and this one was published by uh, FEMA region 5 in uh, 2002 okay so I'm just going to give you an example uh, I know earthquakes is pretty uh, pretty common nowadays in the news at least or being reported so what is a earthquake mitigation activity what does that look like well one of them is uh, seismic hazard mapping learning where all the uh, tectonic plates are and if you're living in one of those high-risk areas you can use uh, seismic hazard mapping to see um, where those risks lie uh, you can also do map education you can uh, educate map users in the appropriate uses and limitations of maps you can do uh, loss estimation studies um, after seismic hazards have been identified planners can create an earthquake scenario to estimate potential loss of life and injuries the types of potential damage and existing vulnerabilities within a community uh, uh, scenarios can be particularly useful in predicting uh, lifeline performance i.e. the sustainability of critical public services and systems such as electricity water and roadways this knowledge can be used to develop earthquake mitigation uh, priorities uh, so yeah that was a little long I'm sorry about reading that but um, the other mitigation uh, activities uh, for earthquakes could be uh, strengthening building codes I know California has some of the uh, uh, harshest and toughest uh, building codes in the nation so um, that's also part of mitigation activity and uh, I hope that uh, this video was a little instructive to you about mitigation, uh, but we'll, we can go in further into details uh, later on.